What's up guys, hope you all are doing well. I wanna give a big shout out and thank you to Alberson Cement Consulting for sponsoring the Super Yoke event at the 2022 Shaw Classic. If you are interested in tickets for the 2023 Shaw Classic, those will be going live on November 3rd. If you are a Shaw Elite Club member, you'll get early access to those tickets. Hope you enjoy the event and really appreciate the support. So Ferris will be on the left side of the course, Rayom on the right. All right, Terry, explain for the fans watching at home the chalk on the shoulders. What does that help? It's just to stop the bar sliding off their back. I mean, it's very critical that that bar doesn't really move off their back. As soon as you start feeling it sliding down, you're all in all sorts of trouble. And again, it makes the balance and everything that much tougher. So, yeah. I mean, Gabriel actually um, listed... Um, this, this is one of his favorite events, so I'm hoping that he puts in a good performance here. Starting off slow and steady. You do not want that bar swinging from side to side. They are almost a dead heat. Kevin Ferris just pulling ahead by one wheel length as Realm has slowed down, and Ferris is having a great run. Really good run there from Kevin. Extremely solid run that was. So he breaks the line. That's all he has to do. And Ferris showing a little bit of sportsmanship class right here, cheering on Gabriel Rayon. He's about five feet short. Still got time on the clock. Yeah, he's just run out of energy there. Yep. So he'll take a measurement and he'll be credited with distance. But what a start for Kevin Ferris. I mean, Terry, he didn't start out running it, but he was smart because he kept that apparatus from swinging right to left. Yeah, great effort from Kevin there. Really smooth run, not blisteringly fast, but good solid run that was. So here we go with the next group in the Super Yoke Carry. It'll be Jerry Pritchett, the American, taking on that man, Zadruna Savisis of Lithuania. Remember, he is a four time world's strongest man champion. His first event, you go all the way back to 1998. 14 time world's strongest man competitor, 12 time finalist, eight time Arnold Classic champion. This should be a good event for Jerry Pritchett as well. 41 years of age, had a good year, Arizona. This is a strong man, and they are off. Remember, that's 1,117 pounds on shoulder. Pritchard's got a nice pace going. Real quick, short steps. Savisis, a little bit of a longer stride, and they are almost dead even. Trying to beat the time put up by American Kevin Ferris just moments ago. Getting close to that finish line. You got to break the line. Pritchett slowing down just a little bit. Savisis, and they almost end on exactly the same time, but they complete the course. Wow, that is two 40-year-old plus athletes going at it. Saviskas, 47 years of age. Pritchett, 41 years of age. And they just carried 1,117 pounds down that 60 feet course. And we'll wait to see, get their time. That's gonna be very close to what Kevin Ferris did. We're now shooting for a sub 22 second time. Kevin Ferris leading the way. Now you see Hooper making sure his position is right. He will be on the left side of your screen as they come at you. Gabe Pena will be on the right. And we're off. Wow. Mitch Hooper is just flying down this course. Hooper, can he keep it all the way to the finish? And he is going to smash the time. And he is in a lot of pain, favoring that right leg as Pena takes a tumble on the course as well. So Pena trying to find his positioning. Hooper just smashed the time that Ferris did and gave Pena back up 
trying to get this apparatus to the finish line. And Pena, the time will run out on him as he will get credit for distance. But it was Mitchell Hooper of Canada that absolutely crushed the time. He was speed walking. So just moments ago, it was Mitch Cooper that did it in 11 point seconds. So he's got the fastest time, Terry. Absolutely incredible. So it'll be Konstantin Janishia of Georgia on the left side of your screen. Evan Singleton on the right side, and Singleton comes out flying. Singleton looking to break that 11 seconds. He gets it to the finish, and he does break the line. Constantine also breaks the line. So two very fast times. The question now, did Evan Singleton do it faster than what we just saw from Mitchell Hooper? 1,117 pounds on shoulder. Time to beat just over 11 seconds. 60-foot course. Thompson on the right, Novikov on the left. Even match, Novikov's got a nice pace going. Yeah, and Bobby's hanging with him as well. Novikov, five feet to go. Gets it done. Great performance from them both there. Both of them absolutely spent. Remember, that's 1,117 pounds trying to beat the record of Hooper put up by 11 seconds. Todd Harris, Terry Hollins with you here from the Budweiser Event Center here in Loveland, Colorado as we continue on the third event of four today on day number one of the third annual Shaw Classic here. Maxime Boudreaux of Canada on the left side, Ivar Smokstelis on the right. Slow and steady, and Boudreaux having issues keeping that apparatus even. Smuxtelis, though, no problems. Gets it. They are going against the clock, and Boudreaux just fighting to finish this course. Remember, he has got a limited amount of time, 60 seconds. Two more feet to go. Gets it. A gutsy performance there from Maxine. Just obviously struggling a little bit with that and still finished it. Real gutsy performance. Well, the fans all getting excited to see what will happen next as we are down to the final two pairings. It'll be Brian Shaw taking on Trey Mitchell. And this will be interesting. Brian Shaw should do really well. Remember, he stands 6 feet 8, 425 pounds. Trey Mitchell goes 6'4, 380 pounds. Mitchell is the defending champion. Brian Shaw won this event in 2020 in the inaugural showing. Brian's in a position now, although he's in third. He's a few points back from Alexi and, and Trey. I think he'll probably be thinking this is an event he can make a move on a little bit and maybe catch, catch those two guys up a little bit. All right, Shaw's in place. Mitchell's in place. This is a battle of the titans. The final event, the final pairing here in the Super Yoke with one event still to go. They're off. Oh, Brian's off like a rocket now. But Trey's hanging with him. A couple of good times here coming in. Trey looks like he's catching a little bit. Yeah, he is. Brian's slowing down just a little bit. Yeah. And here comes Trey Mitchell. Mitchell will cross the line. Not sure he did it in 11 seconds, but that was a very close heat. Great performance from both those two guys there. And what a way to finish off the Super Yoke Carry, sponsored by Albertson Cement Consulting. Brian Shaw giving love to the fans here at the Budweiser Event Center in Loveland, Colorado. What's it like getting a win against some of these legends who I knew you had to grow up watching?
Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I'm still wrapping my head around that I'm in the same room as Z and Brian and Jerry and never mind in front of all you guys. So I'm literally three competitions removed from being one of you guys. So it's, uh, it's pretty surreal. Okay, don't, don't all think and you can get in here too. This dude is special. What was it like? Where did that come from? 11 seconds. Did you know you had that in you on that super yoke? Yeah, I said I'd go under 15. Uh, I thought that's what it would take to win it as well. Um, I've ran three marathons before, and I think a lot of that translates over. Uh, Wait, you've run three marathons? Yeah. I haven't watched a marathon. Mitchell, how are you doing that? So what, what, what do you feel with the rest of this competition, man? Do you feel like this could be yours? Do you feel like you belong with these guys now? I mean, I think you got imposter syndrome for a long time, and uh, I'm certainly not going to lose that in the first few months. Uh, but questioning if, if I'm as good as everyone else doesn't stop me from performing to my capabilities, and they do what they can do, and I'll do what I can do. Well, let's remind you, you just beat some of the legends. You won the Super Yo Gary Mental Hooper. You belong, buddy. Cheers. Thanks, guys. So Mitchell Hooper. So that takes us down to one of our final events as we get in position here. And I've got the numbers. Terry, uh, after those three events, it is no surprise to see Trey Mitchell in the lead, Lexi Novikov sitting in second, and Konstantin Jenish are now sitting in third place. One event still to go. Any surprises for you so far? Um, I mean, probably Konstantin moving up so, so well now. Um, obviously had a great, great run on the yoke. Mitchell Hooper's moved up as well. I mean, what a, what a hell of a performance on yep. that last event. And um, But Trey's the man of the moment. He's, he's absolutely consistent. And then on top of that, Alexi's doing really well as well. Yep. Both those two guys have been right up at the top on every single event so far. So so it's Trey Mitchell, Alexi Novikov, Genesha, Mitchell Hooper, and Brian Shaw, your top five, with one event still to go. That next event here, the final event on the day, will be the dumbbell lift, and this is grueling. Yeah, the one thing I would say is Alexi's about just about the best person. Well, I would say he's the best in the world at this event. So I expect Alexi to win this event. It's all going to come down to our close trade to can stay to him. All right, the final event of the day coming up. We'll take a short break. When we come back much more from Colorado. You're watching the third annual Shaw Classic.